Hey guys, Keith Lesnar, Travel Light RV, coming at you to do a walk around on the 2024 14BH Rove Light. I want to start here real quick in the front, go over a couple things. First thing we use is an all aluminum frame. We use that in order to keep the weight way down. Also, you don't have to worry about corrosion, rust showing up on your, um, on your like the, the typical steel frame will have rust show up on the, the wells and joints and things like that due to the weather in certain climates. One thing, if you look down here, you've got an indicator light. Another standard feature we had at Travel Light RV is a Tucson electronic sway control. And what that does is eliminates the use of uh, mechanical sway and friction bars um, and weight distribution hitches. You can't use a weight distribution hitch on this frame, and there's really no need to. The average tongue weight's about 200 pounds on our product, and the smallest weight distribution hitch is about 400 pounds. So you really be using overkill on anything you bought. Um, really no need for it with today's vehicles. If you have a one-piece wraparound fiberglass roof, the floor is a honeycomb composite. So if you picture a beehive turned sideways, three quarters of an inch thick, cased in fiberglass, that's what your floor is made out of. Same thing they use in the airline industry. On the side walls, what we're using is a uh, Asdale back gel coat fiberglass with two pound fire retardant foam and then Asdale interior walls. And those are all vacuum bonded using a two part epoxy, not the typical water-based epoxy. So what we did is eliminate all the wood in the structure of the vehicle. Um, and what that does for you is it eliminates um, delamination, mold, mildew, any chance of rotting, even if there was water intrusion. In order to keep the water intrusion away, the way we put this together is first we put the floor down and then we seek a flex glue the sidewalls to get to that floor and then seek a flex the entire roof and then we screw it together. So that, that seek a flex glue is the same thing they use on motorhome caps and roofs in order to keep those on. So we use that to glue it together. Then we screw it. Once that Sika Flex glues, we could remove those screws and it would hold together. That's how strong that bond is, but we don't do that. We leave the screws in there. And then we take this rail cap. Before we put the rail cap on, we put in a one and a half inch piece of butyl. It goes behind this seal here. And then we sandwich this rail cover on. You can see the butyl right here if you want to take a little peek at that right there. So you might see that oozing or whatever. That just tells you that it's doing its job. With the heat, it'll kind of expand, and uh, not really expand, but kind of sink in and get squished in there. So we keep that together. Then we put the rail cap on, and then we put the screw cover, which is just this piece on top, covers the screws, makes it look a little bit nicer. As we walk around on the side here, you'll see that we've got a spot for two batteries. Um, batteries don't come with them because it's really dependent on what you want to install on the unit for batteries. Some people want to use lithium. Some people want to use uh, AGM batteries. Um, some people would just use the standard deep cycle batteries. Um, with that, if you step back a little bit here, you can see on the roof, there's a 200 watt solar panel on it. That solar panel also has an MPPT charge controller, which means it's expandable. There are two tails hanging off the back on the top in case you wanted to add another solar panel on the top. That'll maintain your battery. Part of the reason we did that is because we're, the industry's kind of making a change over to 12 volt refrigerators, and they're not the old 12 volt evaporation refrigerators, they're 12 volt compression refrigerator which is a lot more efficient so the 12 volt refrigerator the way it kind of works is it is 12 volt but when your vehicle's charging the vehicle when your vehicle is towing it it'll charge the battery the battery is running your refrigerator when you're on shore power the shore power charges the battery the battery runs the refrigerator when you're not when you're off-grid camping the, in place of the lp refrigerator side the 12 volt is coming from the sun the sun is going to the battery the battery is running your refrigerator so it is not technically a three-way refrigerator but you can use it all three ways if that makes sense um, on the off-road package, we have 15-inch wheels and tires, a longer axle, and then these off-road fenders with uh, cargo capacity on them. The weight capacity on that is 50 pounds, and we give you little leaf, little loops to tie it down with bungee straps or a net or that type of thing. Optional, we have the outside inside speakers with a Bluetooth connection on it. Every unit does come standard with an HDTV AM FM uh, radial antenna, so you don't have to crank it up and forget about it, drive away and rip it off when you pull under your gas station. So it is an omnidirectional antenna that we use. Uh, the awning itself is also an option, and the reason we do that is some people will be very conscious of the weight, and that's kind of why we built this product to begin with. So you could get it without the awning. Um, I haven't seen very many go that way, but it is an option in case you want to do it. With the off-road package comes standard uh, spare tire and a carrier. So the carrier kind of mounts under the frame and goes on there, um, as you can see. The jacks, I've got one down here in the rear end. The way they kind of work is you just walk over, you pull them out, pull them down, push this tab. There's a bar that comes with it. You put it in this hole here and you crank it down to put some tension on it. In order to fold them up, you do the opposite. If there was tension on them, you would walk up and put it on it to release some tension. Go like this, fold it up, pop it up. Pretty simple and easy to use. 
Looking at the roof here, you see we do offer a Magnadyne uh, backup camera prep. So if you go to Magnadyne, you can order that camera and have it installed so you have a backup camera. On the roof, you'll notice there's a roof rack. That is an option. It's um, weight capacity is 250 pounds. There's two bars up there, so evenly distributed 250 pounds in case you want to put your kayaks, um, bicycles, tools, storage, whatever you want to use that for, that's why we do that. Walking around with the offside, you do have a storage compartment here. For 2024, we did put a magnet retention so you can lift it up and stick it here so it'll stay open for you. Some of the 23s didn't have that. They all come with a um, cable hookup, 30 amp shore cord. Now, the one thing we do different is we use a side mount AC. It's a 5000 BTU side mount AC. What that does for you is when you're at home and you're loading that unit up, before you'd have to have a 30 amp plug at your house in order to run the AC on a typical rooftop AC. This one, if you reduce it down to 15 amps, you can still run that air conditioner while you're loading up. We've gone back to the outside shower with hot and cold water. The reason we did that is because you have a tankless on-demand water heater by Gerard. You could literally, as long as you have LP and fresh water, you could fill a hot tub with hot water and you could set the temperature inside to what that temperature of that would be. 20,000 BTU furnace. Typical, that's your standard LP furnace for, for um, heat. Again, you can see another jack there. You do have low point drains. This is your black water connection on the 14BH, and that would be your gray water connection on your 14BH. What else? All right, Joe, you can cut it. All right, so in the 14BH, we do have a bunk option. The top bunk is rated for 150 pounds. The bunk folds a little different than most bunks you're looking at, and the reason we do that is because we wanted you to be able to sit on the bottom bunk here and actually have some head space up here too. Um, we have had some people buy the BH just for to use that as storage as they're traveling. I'm gonna show you real quick how that bunk goes down. So in order to do this, what you'd do is you'd slide this out. That cushion would drop down, giving you a little bit wider sleeping capacity there. You come up here, you pull this bolt here, you pull this bolt lock here, bed comes down, now you've got a bunk. The capacity, of uh, the weight capacity on that top bunk is 150 pounds, it's really made for smaller kids and uh, things like that, or again, storage. I've had people just put bins up there and they'll take these mattresses out and just leave them at home. All right, I wanna talk real quick. In uh, our Rove Light series, we do offer a wet bath. Um, in this weight class, under 2,000 pound um, trailers, there's really nothing out there with a full bathroom, a full wet bath like this. There are a couple. Some of those touch a little bit heavier weights and a little bit, little bit smaller. Um, those are Asdell walls inside, so you don't have to worry about water penetration. We do caulk the corners so that you can use that as a functioning wet bath. Um, the curtain you would use when you're showering, but we just want to make sure that you had a place to go in the middle of the night for those nighttime emergencies. You do have a shower with those quick shut off so you can set your temperature and then take breaks in between while you're soaping up or between rinsing off and soaping up and washing your hair. So we do give you guys a sink in here, a little kitchenette, as well as the bathroom, even though the weight is as low as it is versus a teardrop where the bathroom is, or the kitchen is outside and there really is no bathroom and barely any sleeping capacity. And that's usually what's in this weight category that you're looking at. You got some storage cabinets up here. You have a Suburban two burner LP cooktop. We also have, like I mentioned in the previous video or the previous segment, that we do have an inside outside speaker. Speakers are under here, outside you have them and you do have Bluetooth connectivity on there. As you move over, I spoke a little bit about the 12-volt refrigerator. just want to show you the inside of it. You do have a little freezer space in here as well. And I'm going to turn that off because it is on. I don't want to drain the battery. A little spot for pop cans. I say pop loosely. In here, you've got a 5,000 BTU residential air conditioning. Um, again, that is 5,000 BTU, so you can run that when you're plugged in at home using a 15-amp adapter. So when you're loading up, you're not sweating. You do have a travel latch on the refrigerator so it doesn't come open while you're going down the road. And then your bed, it also for the front, is your booth dinette.
as you come around the corner, I'm sorry, as you come around the corner here, you're going to see there's the MPPT charge controller that I talked about. It is up there. It is mounted. You can see that if you get around there, you can see that the green light shows that the battery is, there is indeed a battery on it. And the red flashing light shows that it is charging. And again, that is an expandable charge controller. So you can add an additional solar panel to it. Okay, so I've broken down the bed just to show you guys where you sleep. Um, you break that bed down. I do have some people that will just leave that down and use that for sitting. That's completely up to you. We try to make them as versatile as possible so you can make it your own. If you swing around here, you'll see that I've, we've installed an exit window here, an emergency exit window. So you just open that up, push it out, and climb out the window in case of a fire. Again, all lights in this unit are LED lights. So everything in here is LED, every light we use, including your backup lights. Um, turn signals, all of it. The reason we do that is we want you to be able to maintain as much battery life as you possibly can for those boondocking situations.